Jerry Bruckheimer is here. He has produced many blockbusters, including Flashdance, Top Gun, The Rock, and Pearl Harbor. In total, his films have made $12.5 billion, more than any other producer in Hollywood history. In recent years, he's extended his golden touch to television with the hit show CSI, CSI Miami, and Without a Trace. Here's a brief look at his career. How much would you have charged me? As what, a translator or a guide? No, just one. Now you've made a mistake. I don't do that. You don't, huh? I know what I see, too. I see a cake. Hey, Mavericks! Yeah? You hear about ice? What's that? You want another one? Really? Yeah. I feel the need. The need for speed. Move and I'll kill you. Don't move! Turn over! Way to go, Rosewood. You're some kind of cop, you know that? Let's get one thing straight, okay? From now on, the only person who yells is me. Why? Because I have a gun, okay? People with guns can do whatever they want. Married people without guns, for instance, you. Mm -hmm. Do not get to yell! Why? No guns! You better f***ing win, that's all I know. You better win, you better win. Now that's how you're supposed to drive. You've been around a lot of corpses. Is that normal? Well, the feet thing? Yeah, the feet thing. Yeah, that happens. Well, I'm having kind of a hard time concentrating. Can you do something about it? Well, like what? Kill him again? You're NASA for crying out loud. You put a man on the moon. You're geniuses. You're, you're the guys that think his up. I'm sure you got a team of men sitting around somewhere right now just thinking up and somebody backing them up. You tell me you have a backup plan that these eight Boy Scouts right here, that is the world's hope? That's what you're telling me? Parents, are they here? We are. That's my mother. Take a good look at her. Because once you get on that bus, you ain't got no mama no more. You got your brothers on the team, and you got your daddy. Now, you know who your daddy is, don't you? December 7th, 1941. A date which will live in infamy. The United States of America was suddenly and deliberately attacked by the Empire of Japan. This summer, he has two new movies, Bad Boys 2, starring Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, and Pirates of, Pirates of the Caribbean, starring Johnny Depp. It is Disney's first PG-13 rated film, and here is the trailer. of the Caribbean, the curse of the Black Pearl. I may have deserved that. I am pleased to welcome Jerry Bruckheimer back to this table. Let me just talk about this movie, and then I want to talk about television as well. Uh, how'd you get Johnny Depp first? I mean, I flew to France, France twice. Right. Uh, once I had dinner with his lawyer and himself, and we right. chatted about what I wanted him to do, a couple movies, and then came back again, and he was in Cannes. He f drove up from Saint-Tropez, where he lives. And we chatted, had about a three or four hour lunch, and I tried to convince him to do Pirates of the Caribbean. When you were making a sell, tell me what you sell. I mean, you, you've got the project itself. You start there, mm -hmm. and why you think it'll be appealing, and why you think the project needs a particular person. Right. How much of you is selling Jerry Bruckheimer? I'm always selling. I mean, that's what you do. You're always selling a studio on trying to make a movie. You're selling a director on trying to direct yeah. uh, a movie for you. You're selling a writer on trying to do a project for you. 
and you're selling actors to so, do your movies. You, okay, those three I understand. They're, they're, right. they're all the same. It's the same kind of pitch. You know, this is right. a great story for you, but you're also selling you, in a sense, and what you have done. And what is it you sell? I mean, you say to them, look, what? I don't say any of it. It's all there. In other words, they know the movies I've made. Right. Uh, they know they the know success. That you, they know that I've you had. have a sense of the pulse of an audience. In a, where yeah, they... I just make what I like. Right. I don't know what you like. I don't know what the audience likes. I just love movies. I, and I went to see Terminator. Had a ball. Yeah. Had my hand in my popcorn. Watched Arnold Schwarzenegger being Arnold, and yeah. just laughed and right. applauded with the rest of the audience. So Did you go to a I'm theater right or to a screening? I went to a theater. I went over on I think it was 13th and Broadway, and and right? watched it and just had so fun. So I was sitting there with the rest of people watching 11, Terminator 3. 11:40 show. Is that I right? I was right there, <laughs> and having a ball. Yeah. So, but tell me why 12.5 billion dollars is a rather impressive number mm -hmm. in terms of putting them in the seats. What is it you have? I'm one of them. Yeah. I'm sitting right there with the audience, and I, I guess I have the same emotion they do for now. Okay, but there are a lot of people who could walk in, Jerry, and say, I'm one of you, and, and I have the same instincts you do, mm -hmm. and they haven't made $12.5 billion worth of theater tickets. You've got to go with your gut. You've got to go with what you believe in. Yeah. You know, other producers I talk to, other actors I talk to, well, the audience wants this, the audience wants that. Studio I wants saw this movie, movie. the right. studio. I don't listen to that. I listen to what I like. And what I liked in Terminator, and what I liked in Pirates of the Caribbean, and right now I'm in sync with the audience, or have been for okay. a while. Uh, so Pirates, right, of the Caribbean. Now, what? Why are you making this movie? Well, Disney came to me with the, with the screenplay. Oh, and they said so we'd Disney like you the, yeah, right, right. to to produce this movie, right. and I said I don't know how to make this movie. I really don't. What you have on the page, I don't understand. Right. I brought in two writers that wrote Shrek, Elliot Rossio. They came up with this idea of cursed pirates. I said, that I understand. That I want to go see. A conventional pirate movie doesn't interest me. What's a cursed pile of pirate? These pirates turn into skeletons in the oh, moonlight. Right. So they, the theme of the thing. they stole a treasure that was cursed. Right. And it's unusual for a pirate movie that's a treasure movie, they have to return the treasure to alleviate the curse. Right. So it's fresh. It's different. And then I wanted Johnny Depp, because Johnny Depp takes you away from that Disney label. His body of work is Edward Scissorhands, right. it's Donnie Brasco, right. it's right. Chalk Alive. Right. It's all these interesting, right. 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 wonderful movies that he's made that are against the it Hollywood doesn't say grain. Disney it doesn't say, Hollywood. It's not for your little sister. It's not for your five-year-old or four-year-old brother. This is a movie that goes, it's PG-13, so it ranges from 13 to 80. But really, if there's a PG-10, it would be uh, PG-10. And, and you've got Bad Boys 2 coming up. Right, all which right. is the opposite. That's a hard R. That's a hard R. <laughs> really hard R. <laughs> With Will Smith and Martin Lawrence. That's right. Now, is that directed to an urban audience, or will that play everywhere? We hope it plays everywhere. But, I mean, the urban uh, demographics are through the roof. I mean, it's like 90% want to see this movie. But, but 90% it's, of an urban audience wants to see this movie. This movie. Uh, but it's hitting it just about every quadrant, except maybe older females, which I will eventually get. Does Martin Lawrence have as much appeal as Will Smith? I think so, because he's hysterical. He's, he's so he is. funny oh, he's in this movie. He's a great guest. Too. Will Smith he's is a really sexy, great and he's he's a wonderful actor, and he's a wonderful comedian. So you have that, and then you pin him with Martin. Plus, what happened? The first one wasn't a huge success. It did 65 million here. It did maybe 140 worldwide, which is not bad for a 20 million dollar movie. But what happened to it is the DVD has been selling through the roof, and the video cassettes. So we have this enormous built-in audience that didn't go to the theaters but bought the DVDs. Does the fact that DVDs play such a prominent role today influence the way you think about a movie? Not at all. I think about the audience, what, how to get people in the seats, which is what I like to do. How to, what gets me to the theater? I open the newspaper and I said, what's playing? What excites me? What do I want to go see? Yeah. That was a movie I wanted to go see. I do the same thing when I read a screenplay. Now, if I open the, the newspaper and saw that this movie, Pirates of the Caribbean, about cursed pirates was playing, I'd go see that movie on that Friday night or Thursday night, whatever it is. Now, everybody has their own taste. Tell me a movie that you like that I'd be surprised about. Um, Good Will Hunting. That's a long time ago. Uh, well, uh, let's see, recently? Yeah. I like Good Will Hunting, too. That was great. Um, I can't think of a picture a recently that would be a surprise. Well, my big fat Greek wedding I loved, yeah. so that was fairly yeah, recent, right. which is completely opposite of the movies I've made. A lot of people come in here and complain about the movie business. You know? Right. They have too much big blockbusters, and mm -hmm. if they don't do well and gear it up on Friday night, then, and that's really not 
good for the business. Do you have any complaints about the business? Not at all. The business has been phenomenal to me. I mean, you, you, <laughs> you're you, not the kind of complaint. No, I mean, no, look, do we spend a lot of money in movies? Yes. Yeah. Is there inflation involved? Yes. Yeah. Um, but movies perform. I mean, even though this summer is down a little bit but from last summer. Are good movies being squeezed out or not? Not really. Good movies find an audience. My Big Fat Greek Wedding, a little tiny movie, started a little yeah, art theaters, did. Yeah. did $200 million. Did, did, did well with Tom Hanks and Rita, too. Well, sure, but still, um, it, it's a good movie, and that's why people go to see it. They look for entertainment. They want to be entertained. They say, entertain me, make me laugh, make me cry. That's what we try to do. You were making a lot of movies. Um, then you turned to television. Why did you do that? Television gave me a lot. It really did. When I grew up, I was glued to that TV. That was my entertainment. I grew up in Detroit. My house was always silent. My mother never had the radio on. There was ne nothing ever going on except me coming home and watching television. I loved watching Combat and Wanted Dead or Alive and yeah, right. Bonanza and all those wonderful shows. I want to kind of give that back. And I watched all these wonderful producers, you know, Dick. Dick Wolf and all these different guys who are making wonderful television sets. Dick Wolf is especially. Yeah, and I said, I can do that. I can try to do that anyway. So we started with CSI, and CSI yeah. became a huge success. Yeah, but you did it by calling on a lot of the people who had helped you make movies mm -hmm. and brought them into television so that you gave a different look and feeling to the television you did. That's correct. I, I drew on all the talent, my editors, my music editors, a lot of actors that I wanted to work with in features and couldn't work with them, uh, directors that I wanted to work with and sometimes couldn't work with them, but they all came out of the feature yeah. world. So it, it, what Anthony Zyker created, right. uh, CSI, said we make feature television. Yeah, you do, in a sense. I mean, you, you're making good story, doing good storytelling. You've got great actors. You know, I mean, I, the one person that I want on this show that we have not had, that I very, and he wants to do it, is Peterson. He's a wonderful I actor. I want him sitting where you are. Just got married. He's a very happy man. Yeah. Beautiful young bride. And, and, and it also, it's a tribute, and I work for him, so I, I have to be careful that I say this, but it's a tribute to Les Moonves, who had his sight on William Peterson for a while before he found the right the vehicle. Yeah. We did the same thing with Anthony LaPaglia, yeah. who is same in a, thing. Exactly. Who's in Another Without guy, a Trace, right? a wonderful Huge actor, right. wonderful actor. But it, you know, it takes a lot of convincing. Again, I'm selling. Yeah. to these actors to say, come with us, we're yeah. going to take care of you, we're going to make you look good, we're going to surround you with real talented right. people, and we have a good shot of having success. And I'll never lie to you. I'll tell you the truth, no matter what happens. You know what he said about you, too? He said, basically, he said two things about you, Boggy did. He said, number one is that he'll tell you the truth. And the second thing, he'll always answer your phone calls. Right. Now, what is wrong with you guys in Hollywood that you don't answer people's phone calls? I don't get it. I don't either. I return every single phone That's call. That's what he said, that they somehow think that they've got to have seven people place phone calls for them, and then that if they immediately answer, it shows you that they're not busy enough. No, I, I believe communication is the key to what I do. Yeah. I communicate all the time. It's a big part of my success is being able to communicate. And, and being able to make people trust you or get people to trust you. That's that right. you are going to do that you're going to do everything within your power to give them a support system that will allow them to be as good as they can be. That's our theory. It really is. We try to build a cocoon around our directors and our actors and the people we work with. And we try not to let anybody enter that cocoon that will give them neg negative energy. We try to give them positive energy all the time so they can be as creative as possible. That's it. We don't want them to be upset or upset about their trailer or upset about the outside world, what's happening to them. When they come to work for us, we, they know that they're going to have a good time. You know what's interesting, too, in terms of television? you got, you got David Chase working in television. Mm -hmm. you got you working in television. I mean, the list is longer mm -hmm. than that. Now, more and more, there are people at work in television who are doing, as, and, and who are doing it more regularly and who are doing it with greater style and skill than, than you see in lots of other media. See, I don't look at television as a second, it's second to features. Right. I don't think it is a stepsister to feature. I, I don't it. think it is in more either. But, but, but I it's see it as real strong entertainment. a lot of smart people were able to prove that it was that way. And, and we take care in every area, from the cinematographer to the production designer. They're carefully cast for each show. It's not just who's available, hire them. It's, you know, we interview everybody, we make sure we have the best. Victor, tell me about the, um, uh, Victor. Is it Victoria Guerin? Veronica. Veronica Guerin. Veronica Guerin. Tell me about that project. That is a story about this journalist right. who was murdered in Ireland. Right. 
uh, for her reporting about these gangsters that were uh, importing drugs. And nobody was paying attention. Kids were dying. They had five kids from one family die uh, overdoses of heroin. Uh, she went to these neighborhoods. She saw what was going on, and she started writing about it. But the libel laws in, in Ireland at the time were so strict that she could never use their names. So she had to come up with these pseudonyms for them, like the general and the monk. But the community knew who these people were, and she put so much pressure on various criminals that they killed her. They told her to stop writing. Uh, they threatened her first verbally. Then they shot her. That didn't stop her. She kept going until they killed her. But her courage changed the laws in Ireland. The trigger people are in prison? Yeah, the, uh, the, the lead man is still in prison. The lead guy who ordered the, the murder is in prison. So why are you, how are you going to find the balance between movies and television and all these other projects? I have great people working with me. It's like, you know, uh, you see I'm, I'm sitting here. I have people on the dubbing stage trying to get uh, Bad Boys 2 finished as we speak. And yeah. the, the director is coloring the movie right now. So when you hire great people, they make you look good in that. So I have great people working with me. You know, part of my talent is knowing talent, is picking the right people to work with us. And I keep them together. I've had the same post-production people, I guess, for five or six years. And uh, the same music yeah, people I've been using over that? You pay them well, and you treat them right, and it's the work. You know, they get a lot of work, and it's good work, and people go see it. So it makes them feel good when they say they worked on Pirates of the Caribbean. I, I, I think it was Michael Bay who said the great thing about you is that, that he'll, be, he'll call up, and he is screaming and saying, this is never right. going to work, and we can never do this movie for this amount of money, and, and you are out of your mind, and, right. and you'll sit there and say, yeah, yeah we'll take care of it. Right. It'll work. God, believe me, it'll work. I mean, there's that kind of calming. You're like you are now. You just... Straight ahead. Straight ahead. You know what? When you've been doing it as long as I have, you know, whatever problem arises, you'll find the solution. And, you know, when we were making Pearl Harbor, which is, I guess, the most difficult movie I had to get made just because of the cost of it, and they kept changing management, so the cost kept coming down, and Michael's budget kept going up. So to try to meet what Disney wanted to pay and what Michael wanted to spend was very, very difficult. We arrived at a number, the picture came in at that number, and Michael got everything he wanted in the movie, even when the budget was $200 million, yeah. and they didn't give him $200 million all, all to make it. All the fireworks that he wanted. He, he got, got everything in all there. All the so, ships that he had to sink and all that stuff. Once you go through that, you know you can figure anything out. Who's the biggest star in Hollywood today? I would say between Tom Cruise and Tom Hanks. Is the really two Toms two? Yeah. Are, the, are the two biggest stars in Hollywood. And, by far. and then women, it's Julia Roberts, um, you know, hands down. An enormous star. Whatever she touches is usually a huge success. I mean, well deserved. She's a really talented woman. But does she make? Does she work hard enough? Is she making enough movies? Or? That's up to her. You know, it comes. It comes down to the material. You know, if you have material that you believe in, you do it. Um, you know, actors. It's really tough to become a character. I don't mean hard enough, but I mean. You know. But it's tough to become a character. They prepare it for three months. They usually shoot it for three or more, four months. So they're they're involved in this thing for eight nine months, and it's 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 hard. It takes a lot of energy to be somebody else because you always have to be on. They have to be on eight hours a day. You're talking about energy. It takes an enormous amount of energy be, to be an actor and have that focus and concentration, take after take. Some directors go 15, 20 takes. I think he is a, a, a remarkable young man, Tom Cruise. He is. I mean, he was here, sat in the chair, you're right. him. But, I mean, he seems, I mean, he's interested in lots of things. I mean, you, I think you told me that he, when you made Days of Thunder, this guy could, could be a stock car driver if he wanted to. No, he flew planes, he flies planes, right. he flies jets, he, he drove cars, he was, a, he was an amazing driver when he drove. He could have, he could have entered the NASCAR. That's what you told me, yeah. Easily. But what's, what's great about Tom is he's so driven and he has this will to win. He wants to, he's so competitive, he wants to win in the worst way. We were doing Days of Thunder. He'd been working all day, he'd finish 11, 12 o'clock at night. I'd get a call from him at 3 in the morning. Is that right? And he'd say, Jerry, I'm going over tomorrow's work. I don't like this, we're not doing it right. So we'd get the writers on the phone. We'd have them on the set at, at 6. At 3 a.m. in the morning. At 6 in the morning, we'd have them show up before Tom. We'd have them rewrite the scene and go do it. Wh what person has that kind of conviction after you worked all day to stay up half the night uh -huh. to make sure that your work tomorrow was as good as the work yesterday? I'm constantly asked about, you see so many people, you know, what the mm -hmm. single quality that you notice among those people that have done something remarkably well. And it is just what you just said. It is focus, focus. It is the capacity to work harder than everybody around them, and it is to be demanding about the final product. That's right. Care yeah. about everything. Tom care cared about, about everything. everything. He didn't just care about his character. He cared yeah. about everybody's character in the movie. And I find that when they made Bad Boys, the same thing with Will and Martin. Right. They were so generous. They would sit. Uh, every Sunday, we'd go through the week's work you know, prior to the week. We'd rehearse everything. And Will would come in and say, I found these great lines. I thought these great lines for Martin. Martin would come in and say, I found, <laughs> what happens if Will said this? Yeah. That's kind of giving and sharing that makes hit movies. 
So what does Jerry Bruckheimer want from all this? I want to keep entertaining people. I was in the theater, I guess, the other night. We had a big press screening for Pirates. Right. And I sta stood in the back, had my hand in my popcorn, and just watched the people love it. That's, I love when they applaud when Johnny Depp comes on the screen. I love when they applaud at the end of the movie. I love when they laugh. That's my thrill. When you start something from an idea or just a little script, you employ all these people, and then you entertain people, and you get to watch those people being entertained. It's a great thrill of it. It's better than the money. It's better than anything else. Not that you t give the money back, but I don't do it for that. I certainly have enough. I could live fine the rest of my life. I love watching people be entertained. I love entertaining them on television. Last week we had the one, and tied for two, both of our shows were tied for second place, without a trace, and, and CSI Miami, and CSI was number one. That's a great thrill that we're entertaining, you know, tens of millions of people every week. The Pentagon. Right. A lot of people didn't like the idea that, that you were doing, or not a lot, some mm -hmm. reporters wrote about this. Right. Uh, that you were too cozy with the Pentagon and mm -hmm. you, were, you were Hollywood. I think Dan Rather had some things to right. say about this too. Sure. That in a sense that you were, uh, that it wasn't appropriate for the military. Mm -hmm. What we were doing for our TV yeah. show, you mean? Right. Um, I disagree with them, of course. Uh, you look at the young men and young women who sacrifice their families, sacrifice a big part of their life, they're not getting paid a lot of money to protect and the belief in our country and go overseas and do th work in horrendous situations that are very dangerous. You see kids every day getting killed in Iraq, which is a terrible situation. They give it all up because they believe in this country. I believe we should know about them. I believe we should know what they do every Tell day stories. and how committed they are into what they do. They, they are what makes this country great. But is there any risk that, in terms of what Dan said, the Hollywoodization of the military? Not really. Do, we're not Hollywoodizing. We're just telling you what they do. We might add a little music to it and, and make it little, look a little sexier than, than what they actually do, but their lives are portrayed on television the way it really is. And, and who, in the end, controlled it? The Pentagon or, or no, the we producer? No, did. we did. I mean, Do they have any, any say-so about The what? only say-so they had is about mentioning names. They didn't want certain names to be mentioned for, for security reasons, so we only used first names or we changed their names. That was it. Yeah. And what happened to that project? It, it, I think it ran four or six shows, and it ran a little bit too late. I guess ABC didn't, didn't believe in it and, and didn't run it. They ran it against uh, Friends, which is the biggest show on television, yeah. and it disappeared. Do you, do you consider that a failure, or you simply look at life in that you, you do a lot of things, and some will hit and some will miss, and you just keep moving? Keep moving. Um, I don't see it as a failure at all because I thought it was a wonderful show. It's just unfortunate it didn't get the right attention or time slot for, for people, enough people to watch it. I think it enough people to watch it in a timely manner because we finished it a lot earlier than they aired it. By the time they aired it, we were, we were gearing up for invading Iraq. Yeah. So it was, it was yesterday's news. Had they aired it early when we did it, I think it would be a bigger success. But you know what? I'm really proud of the shows, and that's all you can be. How many top ten shows is enough for a producer? Um, I'm thrilled to have three right now, so, and we have, I think, seven shows on the air in the fall, so we're, we're, we're really busy right now. Seven shows coming up. Yeah, seven yeah. shows. And, and how many of those do you think will make the cut? Don't know. I have no idea. Listen, if you'd have told me three years ago that CSI would be the number one show on television, I said, Charlie, you're yeah. nuts. The reason you made CSI was because you, you loved the idea, the old Jack Quincy thing, what was it mm -hmm. called, Quincy, right. about Jack Klugman. Mm -hmm. And you loved the idea, and you wanted to make it contemporary so that it appealed to a young audience, right? Well, the reason I made the show is Zyker, who created the show, right. had such a, a, such a creative force and had such a strong, unique point of view for that particular show. I wanted to see the show. And what I love is process. I love you taking me in a, into a world, or me taking you in a world that you've never been in before and show you how it actually works. And he spent so much time with the CSIs. In fact, he was in a situation where he went into a room where there was a dead body, a murder just been committed. He was out with the police on a ride along. And he's in the room alone. Um, all of a sudden, he sees somebody come out from under the bed. The killer was still under the bed. Mm -hmm. And he was in the room with him. So, I mean, that's kind of research. And you see that every week on television. That's why the show's such a success, besides the acting and great writing. But we're give, taking you inside well, the world you've never seen But there's also a reason we've somehow become fascinated, both in terms of novels that sell, mm -hmm. but also in terms of television shows, with the idea of forensic science. Well, that all started with Barry Sheck. 
on the, in the OJ trial. When yeah. you heard all that testimony, that's what excited me, and that's when Zyker came in at the same, at the right time. So for that me. was the timing for him. That was that what got me excited about it. Great to see you. Great to see you, Charlie. It's always fun to be here. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. Why? Because I have a gun, okay? People with guns can do whatever they want. Married people without guns, for instance, you. Mm -hmm. Do not get to yell. Why? No guns! You better fucking win, that's all I know. You better win. You better win. Now that's how you're supposed to drive. You've been around a lot of corpses. Is that normal? The feet thing? Yeah, the feet thing. Yeah, that happens. I'm having kind of a hard time concentrating. Can you do something about it? Really? Yeah. I feel the need. The need for speed. Move and I'll kill you. Don't move! Turn over! Way to go, Rosewood. You're some kind of cop, you know that? Let's get one thing straight, okay? From now on, the only person who yells is me. Was suddenly and deliberately attacked by the Empire of Japan. This summer, he has two new movies, Bad Boys 2, starring Will Smith and Martin Lawrence, and Pirates of, Pirates of the Caribbean, starring Johnny Depp. It is Disney's first PG-13 rated film, and here is the trailer. Here they come. of the Caribbean, the curse of the Black Pearl. I may have deserved that. I am pleased to welcome Jerry Barkhamer back to this table. Let me just talk. Like what? Kill him again? You're NASA for crying out loud. You put a man on the moon. You're geniuses. You're, you're the guys that think his up. I'm sure you got a team of men sitting around somewhere right now just thinking up and somebody backing them up. You tell me you have a backup plan that these eight Boy Scouts right here, that is the world's hope. That's what you're telling me? Parents out of here. We are. That's my mother. Take a good look at her. Because once you get on that bus, you ain't got no mama no more. You got your brothers on the team, and you got your daddy. Now, you know who your daddy is, don't you? December 7th, 1941. A date which will live in infamy. The United States of America. Jerry Bruckheimer is here. He has produced many blockbusters, including Flashdance, Top Gun, The Rock, and Pearl Harbor. In total, his films have made $12.5 billion, more than any other producer in Hollywood history. In recent years, he's extended his golden touch to television with the hit show CSI, CSI Miami, and Without a Trace. Here's a brief look at his career. How much would you have charged me? As what, a translator or a guide? Just one thing. Now you've made a mistake. I don't do that. You don't, huh? I know what I see, too. I see a cake. Hey, Mavericks! Yeah. You hear about ice? What's that? You want another one?